seven seconds left on really the clock. Invasion up. has done it. No! Oh! No! Oh! 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 It couldn't happen any worse. Ray Ray, hands on the stick. He finds the kill. There's no way. There's no way. What's going on? Welcome to the roundup. This week, we have got unbelievable combo drops in grand finals. Pakistan once again making huge statements in the world of Tekken. And for the first time since EVO, it's a CPT offline premiere event. All that and lots more this week on the roundup. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This season, much to everyone's delight, more offline qualification events joined the Capcom Pro Tour. And after EVO, the first of these was in Singapore this past weekend as 400 killers descended on the Gamescom convention looking for an automatic qualification spot to Capcom Cup. Top 8 saw a lot of returning names from EVO with Kakaru in winners and Mena RD in the losers side. But with the progression in Japan of Street Fighter League, there are a lot of new names entering the fray. The first winners final saw Gachikun, who's been grinding out Rashid, going up against Shoto specialist Nauman. That level two super will become a familiar sight this weekend as Gachikun applied the pressure, burnt out Nauman, and the wall splat was all he needed to get the kill. Pre-tournament favourite Kakaru was going up against Hong Kong's Chris Wong, who's been looking dangerous in the World Warrior events. And Chris Wong showed how dangerous his Luke was with some great tech to avoid the amnesia and then a fortuitous timed jump forward got the kill as he cashed out the level 3 and took it in the last game, last round 3-2. In loser's bracket, Moke has been looking very, very dangerous. The Chun-Li has been impressing everyone worldwide and it continued to impress as he smoked Fujimura, eliminating him 3-0 in loser's round one. In loser's round two it would be Mena RD facing off against Hot Dog's difficult DJ and Hot Dog took a 2-0 lead which caused Mena RD to go back to character select. The Blanca came out and things definitely changed. Mena brought it back to last game and this burnout situation meant that all he needed was the chip for the kill. He got it and he advanced 3-2. In the next round of losers, Moke continued his incredibly impressive run by eliminating Kakaru with a swift 3-1 score. And Mena managed to overcome Nauman with another tense 3-2 scoreline. That left us with our final four and in winner's final it would be Gachikun facing off against Chris Wong. Gachikun made light work and it was a 3-0 sweep as he cruised into grand finals and winner side looking unstoppable. In loser semis it was Moke up against Mena RD and the loot pick wasn't working out yet again. A two round victory took the first game for Moke and that sent Mena RD back to character select. And the blanker pick seemed to be working out perfectly. Two perfects in two games saw Mena level it up and go into the lead. But Moke would not be slowed down and he answered back with a perfect of his own and then let off the EX10 show kicks to close out a 3-1 win and eliminate Mena RD from the bracket. I mean Moke would advance to losers finals where he would face Chris Wong and that was where Moke's momentum would end. His journey would come to a close as this time the Tensho kicks didn't work. They were baited out by this air flash knuckle and Chris Wong got the punish and took a 3-1 win. Which got him the run back versus Gachikun in grand finals and what a run back it was. Chris Wong pulled to a impressive 2-0 lead and then using the level three and closing out the set with the overhead, it was a 3-0 sweep for the reset. In the grand finals reset though, Gachikun slowed the pace down and managed to grind out the win for the first game. Gachikun then smelt blood in the water and this double throw bait gave him the big damage he needed to take the lead to 2-0. Chris Wong was ready for the level two here as he punished counters with the throw, but the drive impact was sniffed out and that was Gachikun's opening to close out the set. A 3-0 victory and of course, a spot 
at Capcom Cup at the end of the season. East Coast Throwdown returned this week in Stanford, Connecticut, and it had the honor of kicking off the Mortal Kombat 1 Pro competition. And our top four kicked off with a run back of 2020's Final Combat Grand Finals as Sonic Fox faced off against Ninja Killer. Both utilizing the Cyrax assist, it was Sonic Fox's reign that would overcome Ninja Killer's Raiden to a 3-1 victory, putting them in Grand Finals on the winner's side. In the loser's semi-finals, it was a Johnny Cage mirror, and Zombat's pairing with Kung Lao overcame Pulse three straight games. Loser's final was a much closer affair, but Ninja Killer managed to overcome Zombat 3-2 in the final round. And that set up a run back in Grand Final. And after being taken down in Winner's Finals, it looked like Ninja Killer had made the right adjustments as he pulled ahead into a two-game lead. But Sonic Fox's use of the Carrot Grab not only managed to get the first game back, but leveled it up 2-2. But Sonic Fox only needed one more hit to close it out with the Flawless Block and the Dash Under Punish to take the win and become the first player to win an event on this season's pro competition. Tekken 7 was a dojo event and with many huge dojos happening around the world and the end of the Tekken World Tour approaching, this was a vital one for Anakin who was in winner's finals. Anakin would make short work of Still Electric's Zafina closing out a three round victory to make it 3-0 and advance to grand finals in comfortable fashion. In Losers semi-finals, Run It Back Eddie was on a tear in Losers bracket and it went to last game, last round against Ty, but the Huarang was able to secure the win. But moving into Losers final, Eddie went for the lucky Chloe pick against the Electric. And it proved to be an awful decision as a no round brown three round sweep gave Still Electric the first game and sent Run It Back Eddie running back to the character select screen. The Horang switch proved to be the right one and two quick wins back to back put Run It Back Eddie in grasp of the grand finals. The fourth game went to the very last round but Eddie was able to seal the deal and we would be up for an exciting grand finals between Anakin and local Connecticut fan favorite Run It Back Eddie. No messing around directly with the Huaran pick and that worked out superbly in the first game. Three straight rounds put Run It Back Eddie in the lead. But Anakin's patient and measured play had been superb all weekend and this sensational delayed low parry put him within touching distance of the win. It was a dominant last game, three rounds back to back, an enormous corner pressure as Anakin crushed Run It Back Eddie and secured the victory, and more importantly, secured 150 points to help his Tekken World Tour seeding for the end of the season. Street Fighter VI was a huge bracket. The big shock was last year's Street Fighter V champ Idom continuing his man on woes and getting swept 3-0 by Burkish and being eliminated in losers. In winner's final, Shine, whose path with Chun-Li continues to go strength to strength, faced off against Naji on jury. And it proved to be a convincing victory for Shine, who cruised 3-0 into Grand Finals. Loser Semis saw Space Boy's Luke go up against Burkish's Rashid. And in a close set that went to the fifth game, Burkish was able to secure the victory and book their place in Loser's Final. But that was where Burkish's run would come to an end and an incredible defensive display saw Naji interrupting the level two from Burkish to close out a 3-0 sweep and get that run back in grand finals. And things were looking great for Naji at 2-1 up. He was able to put himself at set point. But Shine was able to keep his composure and defend two set points to take it to 2-2 and a final fifth game of the set. Making great defensive decisions, Shine's delayed button managed to set up the situation and needing one more hit, the check to the drive rush was all Shine needed to take his first East Coast throwdown title. It's great to see Guilty Gear Strive still going strong in North America with 197 entrants, showing that many people are still enjoying Season 3, maybe except Zato players. 
Winner's final started off very well for Tempest with his surprise pick of Kai taking game one over Tetsuo. This didn't last long however as Tatsuo quickly came back to 2-1 at which point Tempest went back to his old faithful Leo Whitefang. He rallied and managed to take the next two games to win the set with his main character and move on to grand finals. The loser's semi-finals between Bean's Chip and Umisho's Sol was another incredibly close set coming down to a game 5 final round situation with Umisho taking the set after a couple of untimely combo drops from Bean. Umisho looked almost vicious after that tense set and dominated Tatsuo 3-0 in losers final who did not look prepared to face Umisho with this much momentum. And that left us with our grand final. She took the first set 3-1 to reset the bracket and then repeated that score once again in the Shin grand finals for her to take the ECT title for Strive. Of course, the Reversal crew were present and Dragon Ball Fighters was on the menu with East Coast Throwdown being on the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour as a power event and having a $1,000 prize pool bonus. It meant that some of the biggest names in North American Dragon Ball were in attendance. And that played out in top four with Legendary Pred and Zayn in winner's finals. With the score at 1-1, Zayn almost made an incredible 1 versus 3 comeback, but it was Pred that closed out that game number 3 and went on to dominate the fourth and final game to take it 3-1 and advance into grand finals on winner's side. But Inzem would pull up with a completely different team of Base Vegeta, Beerus and GT Goku to try and counter Zane's Zamas, Beerus and Gogeta 4 team. However, the counter pick didn't work out and Zane proved to be too strong. The 3-1 victory got him to Grand Finals and the run back against Legendary Pred. And Grand Finals was a complete run back with no changes from either player, the exact same teams on display. And after getting happy birthday, he almost managed to bring it back and get the bracket reset, but Legendary Pred kept it cool with 10% of his HP left to find the hit and the win to take the DBFC power event at East Coast Throwdown. King of Fighters was also on the tour and Grand Finals saw Violent Kane versus Wero Asamiya. And it was a 3-2 bracket reset for Wero, but in the next set, Violent Kane managed to close it out 3-1 and take the win. In Melty Blood, Kiri versus Erin was the Grand Finals and Kiri managed to get the bracket reset in a clutch game five. They carried that momentum onto a 3-1 win in the next set and it would be Kiri who is your East Coast Throwdown Melty Blood Champion. And finally, my favorite moment of ECT this year is Grand Finals of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Evasion has climbed through loser's bracket to face Ray Ray in Grand Finals. And the first game was going well. It looked like he managed to catch Ray Ray in a checkmate situation. All he had to do was run this infinite for 48 seconds. However, seven seconds left on the really clock. Invasion out. has done it. No! Oh! no! Oh! 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 Credit to Evasion, he was able to go on and put another game on the board. But as we got to the final game, Ray Ray tried to run an infinite of his own. And guess what? Dropped that as well. But in the end, it didn't matter as he was able to play to the timeout and get the win 3 1 to become the ECT 2023 Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 champion. All right, let's take a moment to thank everybody involved this week on putting together the show. Big up Nick on the edit, as always, working tirelessly. Thank you uh, to Rexu and Lazarus as well, helping us pull together the clips. Big up you guys. Uh, and of course, thank you to all the TOs and all the players who've pinged us and let us know what events were happening around the world. If you've got an event coming up and you want us to cover it, then hit us up on Twitter. That's at reversal underscore GG. Please send us links to the start GG or the bracket its page uh, and of course which twitch channel or youtube channel it's going to be live streaming on so we can check out the footage if you're enjoying the coverage so far then make sure you
you hit that like button below. We've got loads of stuff planned to drop in the near future, including podcasts, interviews, more documentaries, and of course, VODs of our fantastic live events that we've been broadcasting. And live streaming is exactly what we are going to be doing at UFA, which is happening at the end of November in Paris. One of the biggest events in the European calendar for whatever game that you love. We will see you there in Paris. You can sign up right now. Head over to UFA underscore gaming for the link and the info on how to sign up. Buy your tickets right now. We'll see you there. All right, lots more tournaments to cover. So let's get straight back into it. Here we go. It was a critical weekend for the Tekken World Tour and this time the last Asian Challenger event in Korea was the location of a nightmare bracket as one of the most stacked events in recent history took place in the Core A Gaming Studios in Seoul, South Korea. Uprising Korea was the scene of one of the most tensely contested Tekken events of the season. Top 8 then kicked off with a top tier Pakistani battle as Atif Bhatt and Arslan Ash faced each other. Arslan picked Noctis to counter Atif's Akuma and it worked out brilliantly as Ash took a 2-0 win. In the other semis, tournament revelation Galgonge, who has been performing well in local events but has never travelled outside of Korea, took an impressive victory over I'm Your Father, earning a shot at Arslan in winner's finals. Down in losers, Ulzan eliminated Chanel and Pina took out Mol Gold. In winner's finals, we saw a fantastic set with Galgonge taking a brilliant 2-0 lead before Arslan switched to Kunimitsu and leveled the set at 2-2. Galgonge, however, was still able to win the fifth and final game to earn a famous victory and make it to grand final on winner's side. Continuing the losing bracket, I'm Your Father eliminated Ulzan and Pinya beat Atif's Leo to then meet each other in losers' semis. Pinya was able to bag the win against the Lee player and more importantly, add valuable Tekken World Tour points to his tally, entering top 19 on the leaderboard. Unfortunately, that was as far as the Japanese player could go as Arslan Ash defeated the Master Raven player 3-1 to earn a second shot at Galgonge in Grand Finals. And this time round, Arslan went immediately to the Kunimitsu and reset the bracket. And there was nothing Galgonge could do to stop the momentum as the 3-0 sweep in the reset earned Arslan the big win on Korean soil. Not just the valuable Tekken World Tour points, but a huge statement of Pakistani Tekken dominance. We saw the return of Berlin Tekken Clash, an event that had been missing from the European calendars for quite some time, made its return. And as we hurtled towards the end of the Tekken World Tour season, the precious points were at a premium. In top four, we had the local classic between Sefi Black and Tetsu in the winner's final. Tetsu bringing out the Feng to everyone's surprise, and he pulled ahead with a 2-0 lead. Sefi managed to pull it back though to 2-2 and took the set to a last game, but Tetsu switched to his main Claudio and was able to close the victory out and get that spot in grand finals on the winner's side. Down in loser semis, we had Mosquito going up against DBP, with the latter in fine form after winning the Maltese qualifier and an ICFC bracket over the last two weeks. The Bob player was able to defeat Mosquito and keep on aspiring to win a third tournament in as many weeks. However, this hope would be cut short by Sefi Black, who in dominant fashion secured a 3-0 victory and earned that run back at Tetsu in grand finals. This time round, Tetsu started with Lydia and again went 2-0 up. And once again, Sefi brought a game back. But with no messing around this time, Tetsu immediately switched to Claudio and once again managed to get the win to take the 3-1 score and of course, the Berlin Tekken Clash title. Meanwhile, in the United States, eight top Street Fighter 6 players were invited to Las Vegas for the Cash App Rumble Royale. They would play off in exhibition first of five sets for prize money, along with a few concept matches that threw in a couple of curveballs. There's over five hours of action on the VODs, courtesy of Tampa Never Sleep, so check that out right now. But you can see longer sets featuring Justin versus Brian, Do versus JB, Strider versus Nephew, Jack versus Metroid, and many, many more. 
There was also a winner stays on format event as well that Knuckle Dew was able to take down. It's a whole night of fun, so check it out. Some great longer form sets for you to enjoy some high level Street Fighter 6. Winner stays on returned to the Red Bull Gaming Sphere in London this past weekend and we saw Tekken 7, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Street Fighter 6 on the lineup for the two day event. Up first was Tekken 7, which was the last Tekken Dojo event and European Tekken Cup qualifier of the season. Grand Final saw Monster in winner's side facing off against Sarg and at 2-0 up it looked like Monster was cruising to a victory. But Sarg was able to bring it back and reset the bracket and the snowball effect saw Sarg crush his way to a victory and take first place. In Dragon Ball Fighters, OB Assassin was in the winner's side against Videkt in Grand Finals. OB pulled into an early lead going up 2-1 in the Grand Final set and he was able to close out the victory 3-1 and take in the bracket on the day. On to Sunday and Street Fighter 6 saw over 50 entrants fighting it out. Fresh off his title belt win at EGX a couple of weeks previously, Hurricane was in Grand Finals on the loser's side facing off against Shaxx and he was able to reset 3-2 in a tense first Grand Finals. The reset bracket couldn't be more evenly balanced as it went to a last game, last round scramble and Hurricane was able to take the victory, closing out a great day of Street Fighter action here in London. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead, he's dead. Bang, decapitate, bang. Wow, Hurricane brings it all the way back. That's all we got time for today. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Roundup. We'll be back next week looking back at the last seven days of tournament action from all corners of the FGC globe. Remember, if you've got an event coming up you'd like us to take a look at, then hit us up on the Twitter. That's at Reversal underscore GG. I'll be back same time next week. So until next week, may all of your wake up DPs land. May all of your mix ups hit and may fortune always be in your favor. Of course, may all of your combos never drop. That's a big one. Uh, I'll see you next time around here on the Roundup. Take care.